too late to say you're sorry How would I know? Why should I care? Please don't bother trying to find her She's not there Well, let me tell you about the way she looked The way she acted, the color of her hair The eyes were soft and cool The eyes were clear and bright But she felt that That'll be over at Diswell Tunnel, will it, Sarge? So I'm informed. An adult male, and not the first time it's happened, apparently. All right, well, I'll take a ride over there. Incidentally, Sarge, I've uh, decided to sit my sergeant's exams. First chance again. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Bradley. Not before time, in my opinion. I'll set the paperwork in motion. All right, thanks, Sarge. And breathe out. All right, Mr. Max, while well, you can do your shift up again. Your chest is as clear as a bell. There's no indication that there's anything wrong with your heart, either. Then why do I keep getting these chest pains? Uh, when did they start? A couple of weeks ago. Have you any pain anywhere else? In your arms, shoulders? No. I'm afraid your medical records still haven't caught up with you from your previous GP. What was her name again? Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell. Right. Well, I think what I'll do is arrange for you to have an X-ray over at the hospital. We'll take it from there, OK? OK. Oh, yes, sir. What can I get you? You have whiskey? <laughs> we certainly do. I have one large whiskey, please. Right. Hi there. What can I get you? Large mullet, please. Yeah. I'm looking for a friend of mine. I hear you move around here. Maybe you know him. And the uh, name of this friend of yours? Mr. Screeps. Vernon Screeps. Oh, I certainly know Mr. Screeps. In fact, uh, he's due in here just about now, I'd say. Good. That's good. I'll bring you the change. If you got a pack of trouble Weighing on your worried mind if you tend to see things double And you can't unwind Take a trip to Green Street Green And get yourself a little scene Everything is kind of groovy Down at Green Street Green uh, PC Mike Bradley, sir, Edensfield Police. Oh, yes. We've been getting reports of somebody messing around on the railway line over there. I was uh, just wondering if you'd noticed anybody hanging around. I'm afraid I haven't, no. Why? Well, it's happened several times. I'm surprised you haven't seen anything. Well, I don't spend my life looking out of the window, Constable. No. Well, look, if you do spot anything, uh, you know where to contact me. Ah, oh, David, just the man. Is Vernon with you? No. He's, uh, got a bit of business. Well, that bloke over there says he's a friend of his. Oh, I... Uh, excuse me. It seems Mr. Screeps is not coming in today after all, but uh, young David here can tell you where you can find him. Oh, yes? You are a friend of Vernon's, yes? Oh, oh I, yeah, well, we live together. Oh, that is, we share the same house. I also am a friend of his. <laughs> <laughs> this house you have together, he will be there later, maybe, yes? Oh, I definitely have, yeah. Where is it, please? Oh, it's just down the, um... Well, I'll write the address down for you, if you like. That would be kind. There you go, David. 
My friend will get a big surprise when he sees me, huh? No more, yeah. Here you go. So, um, who are you then? Sokas. Igor Sokas from Lithuania. Oh, oh, Mr. Verner was saying the other day he had some business with Lithuania. With me. Oh. Well, Mr. Denby. Uh, it's not often we're graced with a visit from MI5. I imagine not. And how can we help you? Well, it's nothing more than a courtesy call at the moment, Sergeant. Just to let you know that we're here on your patch. I see. And what precisely will you be doing on my patch, Mr. Denby? Well, suffice to say that uh, if we should need a spot of muscular backup at some point, we may well be calling on you. Which we'll be more than happy to supply, Mr. Denby. As long as I'm kept in the picture as to exactly what it is we'll be backing up. Well, I hope that doesn't mean you're going to be uncooperative, Sergeant. Good Lord, no, Mr. Denby. However, that said, I think you will find me a lot more cooperative if I know what I'm supposed to be committing my men to. I see. Hmm. All quiet, lads. Clive. Oh, hello, Bradley. Yeah, someone told me you'd been shunted up here to Darkest Yorkshire. That's what they said, was it? Anyway, must fly, old boy. Busy, busy. See you around. Can't wait. Well, I reckon I could. Snooty Becker. Old mate of yours, eh, mate? Oh, no, I wouldn't have put it that strongly. No, we were just uh, cadets together in London. Oh, you'll be fascinated to hear, Bradley. He's now with MI5, apparently. Who? Denby. You sound surprised. Well, well, he was never what you might call the, uh... Sharpest knife in the drawer. Which goes a long way to explain the state of national security these days. Sorkus? Not Igor Flaming Sorkus, I hope. That's right, that's him. He'll be a oh, nice bloke, I thought. Until you get the wrong side of him. And then he's like a polar bear with a sore tooth. You didn't tell him where he could find me, did you? Well, not, not, not exactly, no. What do you mean, David? Not exactly. Oh, what's up? What is up, David, is a couple of years ago, I sold Comrade Sorkers a consignment of umbrellas. What's wrong with that? They let the water in. If he's back here looking for me, it can only mean one thing. What? Oh, no. Oh, David, I want you to calm down and listen. Now pull yourself together, and when you've done that, answer the door. What, me? And when you do, tell him this, OK? Tell him I'm not in, and in fact, have left the country. Yeah, but... He... Well, he's not here. In fact, he's left the country. When did he tell you this? Oh, just now. On the phone. From the airport. I see. Well, when you do see him, just tell him Igor Salka said hello. Oh. oh. No, I won't. I will not either. But if I do, I'll tell him, yeah. So, goodbye. Oh, yeah. Goodbye. Hiya. Your usual, is it? Oh, yes, please. You following me around, Clive? Or well, should I be asking you that question? Never mind. So, what brings you up to the frozen north? And that's what your sergeant sent you to find out, is it, Bradley? What? Well, put it this way. With all the gin joints in Yorkshire, why should it happen to be this one you just strolled into tonight? <laughs> Well, it could have something to do with the fact that this happens to be my local. Hmm. Yes, of course it would. Anyway, excuse me, old boy. I've got a couple of calls to make. Hello, my friend. Hey. I hear you leave the country. Look, Igor, uh, about 
the umbrellas. Look, I can explain. Hey, what's to explain? Back in Lithuania, I make, uh, how you call it, a big killing on them. Really? Yeah, you got any more, I take them off your hands. Oh, alas, no, no. I mean, that particular source dried up in the bankruptcy court. It's no matter. I'm not here to talk about umbrellas. I'm here to offer you a deal. Oh, I... What deal's that, then? We don't talk about it here too many years, but, uh... Back at your place? Right. There we go. Mr. Maxwell. I wondered if you'd managed to fix up that appointment at the hospital for me. Yeah, I did. I've been trying to call you. You're obviously out. It's ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Well, good thing I dropped in then. Yeah, I suppose it is. Sorry if I startled you. That's all right. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning then, right? That's it. And now I really have to lock up, I'm afraid. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Good night, then. Good night. <laughs> oh, I come from poor country. We have no natural resources. Aye. Very bad luck, that ego. Except for just the one. Which one's that, then? Pete. Pete? Pete? Pete. Oh, Pete! Oh, you mean that stuff they use to burn instead of coal? That we have plenty of. It's just the one problem. What's that? Because of this stupid iron curtain, we sell it only to Russia. But perhaps, my friends, there is a way around this. A way of importing into England. Go on. Like on my trawler in Whitby Harbour, I have a load of this peat as ballast. Yeah? If I give it to you, and you sell it, and we split the money 50-50... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Igor, the moment I heard you were back, I knew some good would come of it. They were my very words to you, weren't they, David, when you told me? Thomas! <laughs> <laughs> Now you say it all together, on your own, okay? Yeah. Iximas. That's right, yeah, it's good. Tomas. That's good, that's good. Dilly. Yes! <laughs> oh, good, my friend. Craddock? Ah, good morning, sir. Yes, Mr. Denby did drop in and see me yesterday. Well, no, I wouldn't have said that I was being uncooperative, sir. I was merely seeking to clarify... Of course, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. So when you left London, did you jump or were you pushed? Or is that none of my business? No, oh, I jumped. Had long, in fact. Really? Well, the pace of the big city isn't for everyone, I suppose. What do you want, Clive? Vernon Scripps. What can you tell me about him? Well, he arrived here about a year ago, and his brother's the local undertaker. What's he like? Well, I suppose he's a bit of a wide boy. He's never given us any trouble. What well, suddenly made Aidens feel so irresistibly attractive to him, do you think? It certainly can't be the nightlife. I can't seriously believe that you're suggesting that he'd be up to anything that your lot would be interested in. They probably said that about Burgess and McLean, old boy. Who knows what uses they might find for him. 
The Fardingdale's no more than a spit away, and Russian trawl is in and out of Whitby all the time. Chief Superintendent Southgate has been in touch. That's right. Good. Only I need one of your local yokels put under surveillance. Oh, yes? And the name of this local yokel? Scripps. Vernon Scripps. And may I ask what it is Mr. Scripps is suspected of? If that isn't too presumptuous of me? Well, let's just say he's been keeping some pretty dubious company lately, shall we? Oh, and I'd prefer to be allocated two of your brighter specimens, if you don't mind, Sergeant. Of course. Well, if you'd like to wheel them in here. All right. Ventress, Bellamy, in my office, please. Results back from the hospital. I thought I'd just drop by and let you know what they said. Good news, your lungs are completely clear. What's wrong with me then? Well, it could be a pulled muscle or a trapped nerve somewhere. Anyway, what I thought for now is I'll leave you some painkillers. If it still hasn't cleared up by the weekend, come and see me again. Right. Do you not find it a bit isolated out here? Well, I like the quiet. Besides, I've always got the trains for company, if I get really bored. What's happening? Well, they're loading something in sacks onto the back of their truck. You feeling a bit conspicuous, Alf? I mean, we could easily keep an eye on that pub over there. What a good idea, Phil. In fact, I'd say it's the best one you've had today. After all, it's thirsty work watching other people working. Maybe, maybe you, you leave it to uh, me and my boys for a moment. Right. Come back and collect in 20 minutes. Just leave it, David. Come on. Oh, no. no, I don't believe this. Right, come on, this way. Come on, David. I got the last one. All oh, right. Well, I would only be answer it, you know. David, there's a gentleman's toilet here. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to find a wash basin with running water. Yeah, all right. Mr. Maxwell? <laughs> so where exactly is 
the pain now, Mr. Maxwell. Right there. And you have no pains anywhere else? No. If it was a heart attack, you see, the pains almost certainly wouldn't be there. Well, what are you suggesting? I'm making all this up? I think, Mr. Maxwell, you've convinced yourself you're having a heart attack and produced what you imagine are the symptoms. I should be in hospital. If I thought for a minute you should, I'd have already called an ambulance. Now, your blood pressure is up a bit, but that's only to be expected, and it's certainly nothing to worry about. Your heart's fine, believe me, so try to calm down. I want you to take two of these for now. Tranquilizers. Sedatives to help you get some sleep. Then I want you to get to bed. All right? Good. And I'll see you in my surgery first thing tomorrow, OK? OK. Thank you, Doctor. All part of the service. Pete! Yes, Pete. And I'm not just talking about your commoner garden bog standard, Pete. I'm talking about Lithuanian Pete. The creme de la creme of Pete's. Not only does it burn hotter than coal and longer, but it also fills the premises with the most aromatic of aromas. Go on, then. I'll try a couple. Right, David, off you go. Fetch some in. And believe me, Gina, when you've experienced what you're about to experience, you will never touch a piece of coal again. What's he going on about now? Pete. Pete who? Oscar, what we're talking about here is the fuel of the future. I'll tell you, people have been snatching my hands off all over Aidensfield for this stuff this morning. Home, James, and don't spare the horses. I've got to get home and get on the blower to Comrade Sorkers and tell him we'll be down there first thing in tomorrow for another load. Do you know, David, the day is fast approaching when you and I are going to be able to look that bank manager of ours in the eyes again. Oh, hello, Enoch. How do, Mr Blaketon? Usual, is it? Uh, not today, thanks, Enoch. We're trying out something different. Oh, I. And that something different wouldn't be some of this Lithuanian peat, would it? Well, uh, yes, it would, as a matter of fact. Supplied by, don't tell me, one Vernon Scripps Esquire? Ah, oh, that's right. You're the fourth of my regulars today to have told me that. I reckon it's about time me and Mr Scripps had a little chat. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. I can see a very bright future beckoning for you and me, David. I'm not just talking about one truck, you know. No? I am talking about an entire fleet spanning the whole of the northeast and beyond. The script's in. Yeah, it's just, uh, Mr. Scripps. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Pleasure was the very last thing I had in mind. For you, any road. And you are? Enoch Payne, the one whose livelihood you are busy stealing. Me, Mr. Payne? You, Mr. Scripps. And how do you reckon I'm doing that, then, Mr. Payne? By undercutting me with that rotten peat you're flogging. Now, now, come, come. <laughs> Little bit of healthy competition never hurts anybody, Mr Payne. Quite right, Mr Scripps. But that won't stop me hurting you if you don't knock it off. Now, let's not be too hasty about this. I'm not going to be. When I dismember somebody, I like to take me time about it. That's why, when I were doing a bit of wrestling, they used to call me the excruciating pain, you know. Really? <laughs> but you are these days by way of being a coal man by trade, is that right, Mr Payne? That's right. Then you could be the very man we're looking for. Oh, I. We are suppliers in sore need of a local distributor, and you could be that man to our mutual business advantage. Oh, I. 
Take a seat, Mr. Payne. And let's discuss this like civilized human beings. Hi. So, how are you this morning? Well, I've still got the pain. Your previous GP lives over in Barnswell, right? That's right. Which is just a couple of miles from here. Yeah. What made you decide to change doctors? Well, it made more sense to use someone in the village. And you live alone? That's right. What do you do for a living, Mr Maxwell? I was a teacher. Was. Yes. But what has any of this to do with the pains I've been getting? Well, there's absolutely no evidence that there's anything physically wrong with you, which suggests that the pains could be psychosomatic in origin, brought on quite possibly by stress. Or to put it in another way, it's all in my mind, right? That's not quite what I said, Mr Maxwell. In as many words. Well, it's something we're all capable of. We can generate psychosomatic symptoms. And the more intelligent and sensitive we are, the more capable we are of it. Look, Doctor, get it into your head, will you? I'm not imagining anything! And there's certainly nothing wrong with my mind! I've never for a minute suggested that there was, and please don't shout! Well, what do you expect me to do, eh? Just sit there and be told I'm off with trolley? You know, when I first met you, I really thought you were going to be different. But your quacks are all the same, aren't you? If you can't fob someone off with a couple of pills, or you can't fob them off with some sort of edge drinker, you're absolutely lost, aren't you? I'm trying to help you, Mr Maxwell. Then I'll get help. But not from here, obviously. Another satisfied customer? Well, hardly. You know he owns a cottage up by Didswell Tunnel? I do, yeah. We've had several reports of a man messing about on the line up there. He said something the other day about trains. Do you think he might potentially be suicidal? Oh, hypochondriacal, certainly, but self-destructive. I shouldn't have thought so. The two conditions hardly go hand in hand. Right. So, what's your problem? <laughs> Oh, uh, nothing more than a request for a repeat prescription, actually. Ah, yes. I've got a bone to pick with you two. Why? This so-called peat you sold Gina, it won't burn. You're quite sure it is peat, are you? Oscar, would I sell you duff stuff? <laughs> you expect me to answer that, do you? How exactly do you mean it won't burn? Well, how else can I put it? I'll say it slowly. I can't get it to ignite. Right. I'll get onto my supplier first thing in the morning. I've got a better idea. You get onto your supplier now, or I'll have my money back. Right. So, do you mind if we have a couple of drinks first? Business before pleasure, Mr. Screeps. Mr. Maxwell. Look, please, just go now or you leave me no choice. Well, let's call the police. That would be your friend, the village constable, then, would it, Doctor? The one you discuss all your patient's secrets with. And what do you mean by that? <laughs> and what do you mean by discussing my so-called condition with him this morning? Whatever happened to patient-doctor confidentiality? How dare you discuss my health with that policeman as if I was some sort of criminal. You do realise I could have you struck off for that, Doctor?
So what it boils down to is this eagle. That peat you saw me won't burn. For a very good reason, my friend. Oh? He's not properly dried out yet. Look, on long sea voyages, the atmosphere in the hold is damp, no? Well, I suppose so. But once it dries out, it burns like debilio. And there's nothing else wrong with it, then? My good friend, why would I lie to you? We have good business going here. It's in my interest to provide only the good stuff. Just tell your customers, give it a day or two, and then try it. And uh, speaking of business, I believe we did agree. 50-50, you know? Buy you a drink. Did he uh, threaten you in any way? Only with getting me struck off. But look, I really don't want this taken any further, Mike. After all, he did have a legitimate grievance. It was unprofessional of me saying what I said. It's just as well I don't have a receptionist overhearing things like that. So, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Just make sure it doesn't go any further, that's all. After all that fuss about the pill, the last thing I need is another complaint. Tricia, you don't have to worry about that. But look. Are you sure about Maxwell not being suicidal? I'm positive, yeah. But it's just, you know what they say, there's no smoke without fire. Still no luck with it, then? Ah, uh, no. Not a ruddy flicker. <laughs> Why don't you try and get it going with a bit of coal and a couple of fire lighters? Well, anything's worth a try, I suppose. Good on there, Mr. Vernon. Let's just say, David, it might be wiser to drink somewhere else tonight. <laughs> Scripps! You've done it this time! Your days are numbered! <laughs> Where's Scripps? He's just taken off in that truck. And when I see him again, I'm gonna kill him! Well, you'll have to join the queue. This has happened to six of my best customers today, thanks to that flaming peat I sold them. And now, they're all looking for a new Coleman. Scripps! Scripps! I know you're in there, and you're gonna have to come out sometime. And when you do, I'll be waiting. You can hide, but you can't run. Leastways, not as fast as I can. Pete. I'm not a very good Pete either, from the sound of it. And have you passed all this on to our colleague in MI5 yet? Yeah? Oh, I was just going to, Sarge. Oh, no, 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 Ventress. No, that's quite all right. I'll do it. So, Dr. Summerby, Eamon Maxwell. Who was, I understand, a patient of yours for some years before he came to me? Yes. What can you tell me about him that's not already in his medical notes, I mean? Well, always a very highly strung young man, but there was never any evidence of anything more serious than that until his wife died, which was a dreadful shock for him. I mean, well, there she was, to all intents and purposes, a perfectly healthy young woman. And then, when she and Eamon were playing tennis, she had a heart attack and died in his arms, right there on the court. After that, he went completely to pieces. Lost his job, everything. And then became quite convinced that he was going to have a heart attack himself. I tried to talk him out of it, but he wouldn't believe me. Anyway, things came to a head when I suggested that I refer him to a psychiatrist. At which point he became quite abusive. Violently abusive leaving me no choice but to refuse to treat him any longer. I did try to help him, 
that there was really nothing that I could do. So there we are, Mr. Tenby. No threat to national security, just a grubby little business deal. Well, at least that's what it looks like on the face of it. I'm sorry? I mean, has it occurred to you for a single second that your constable here might have been recognised and the conversation staged entirely for his benefit? Uh, with respect, sir, I don't think so. I don't think they had a blind idea that I was there. Or was that what you were meant to think, Ventress? What are you saying, Mr. Denby? I am saying, Sergeant, that surveillance will be maintained until I say otherwise. The KGB do recruit the most unlikely characters. And a man like him could be useful in any number of ways. It's a complete waste of time. There's no way that Vernon Scripps would be a spy. Of course he isn't, Ventress. Only our Mr. Denby doesn't think so, or he doesn't choose to anyway. How do you mean? Well, it doesn't exactly enhance your career prospects, does it? Having to admit to everybody that you've been wasting their time for a week. However, if Mr. Denby is our man in Middlesbrough, his career's hardly on an upward spiral, is it? Oh, well, ours not to reason why. Back in the saddle, Ventress. Off you go. Chief Superintendent Southgate, please. across the Baltic bit. What's the big idea of lumbering me with that stuff? Just what I said myself, Vernon, when I tried to sell those umbrellas you sold me. Only to be told by my customers they were, how shall I put it, not quite weatherproof. So that was the game, was it? That was the game, Vernon. What's the matter? You don't see the funny side of it? All I want to see is my money back. Just what I said myself, Vernon. But guess what? You can't whistle for your money. The way I see it, we're even. Okay? What's all this then? What guy? It's good stuff. I sell to a friend of mine. And you told me you only exported peat. What of the problem, is it, David? Mr. Ventress, what are you doing here? Keeping an eye on you two. Did you know you were under surveillance then? Surveillance? Oh, yes, David. Did I, Eamon? Embarrassing for you, I can see that. Look, just go away and leave me alone, will you? No, I can't do that. See, when you became my patient, you also became my responsibility. Yeah, I was planning on finding myself another doctor. And another one after that, and then another one. You can't run away forever, Eamon. Will you go now? Not until we've sorted this out! Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I've got that. Thank you. Mike, that was the railway. More trouble over at Diswell Tunnel. This time it was a man and a woman on the line. Really? 
Right. I saw Dr. Mitchell this morning. That idiot. I happen to agree with her. Eamon, I know about your wife. You need psychiatric help. Look, I told her. Now I'm telling you. No! How old was she? Thirty. You must have really loved her. It's a big mistake letting yourself get that involved with anybody. You don't believe that. I know you don't. You know nothing about me! I am so sorry. But, Eamon, you're not gonna die of a broken heart. You'll just make yourself miserable for the rest of your life, and that's the last thing she'd have wanted for you. And at the end of the day, no matter how terrible it is, you have to pick yourself up and get on with it again. Hello, Mike. Trish. Everything all right? Fine, thanks. We've just had another report that somebody's been seen on the line, um, a man and a woman. Really? Well, I've been here for at least half an hour and I haven't seen anything. You're sure about that, eh? Absolutely. And you're quite sure everything else is okay? I'm certain, Mike. Well, in that case, I'll uh, leave you to it. Thanks. That's all right. Though if there's any more nonsense out there on the railway track, I might have another word with PC Bradley. I'm going to arrange an appointment with a psychiatrist for you. Because what you're suffering from is clinical depression and it's treatable. But you have to promise me you'll keep this appointment. Promise me. Igor! A word before you beetle off with your ill-gotten gains. Okay. You know, for the last couple of days, you and me have been under surveillance. Surveillance? See the face? You can spot them a mile off, secret policeman. And coming from where you come from, well, you should know if anybody should. And why would they be interested in us? Because they reckon you're a spy, mate. Ha! <laughs> Me, a spy? Yes, well, I'm glad you find it funny. I wish I did. How do you know that's what they think? Because I've just been cross-questioned. Given the third degree in the car, David and me. I'm not a spy. The idea is ridiculous. But well, I know that. And you know that. But will they believe that? knowing what nasty little suspicious minds they've got. Then again, if I was to wander over and tell them for the last two days you've been trying to recruit me, well, Igor, it could be a long time before you see Mother Russia again. What do you want? Only what's due. Thanks. And I'll tell you what, I'll take a crate of that vodka, just as samples, and then when you come back, maybe we can do some more business together. I don't want to see you till the day I die. Oh, well. We'll have a chat then, then. told by your constables out there that they're no longer at my disposal, on your orders. No, not on my orders, Mr. Denby. 
Chief Superintendent Southgate, Division, actually. Oh? Hmm. Having heard what was going on, he agreed with me that this whole thing was fast becoming a bit of a wild goose chase. So, manpower being as short as it is, he's decided that no more of my men can be spared. Of course, if you wish to continue to pursue inquiries yourself, then I suppose that's your business. But no longer ours, it seems. Mr. Screeps, take a look at that. That's what I call a fire. See me at the bar. Poor old Denby, eh? Should have seen his face, though, Mike. Well, you'd have to have a heart of stone not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm much obliged. Oh, by the way, uh, Enoch, my friendly coal man. He's been looking for you. Yeah, I bumped into him, thank you. All sorted out now, I think. To our mutual satisfaction. <laughs> 